calls for the United States. Mary is honored by all the peoples of the Americas, North, Central, and South America. Mary's gift of her message and her portrait came first to the Indians and Spanish of Central America, to Juan Diego and his people. This is the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Francesca and Dominican priests came from Spain to instruct the Indians in the Christian religion. Their missionary work was very critical because of the pagan religion of the natives and because of the brutality of the rulers and soldiers. Juan Diego, Aztec Indian convert, lived in a village a few miles north of the present Mexico City. His wife died two years before, and he was living with his uncle, also a convert. Juan loved his uncle very much and helped him in his illness. On Saturday, December 9th, 1531, Juan was on his way to Holy Mass in honor of our lady. The early converts had the custom of going to Mass on Saturdays in honor of the Virgin Mary at the Church of St. James. It was very early in the morning. Juan heard the song of her. He was very surprised. Juan heard, Juan heard a woman's voice calling, Juan Diego, Juanito. Juan climbed the hill, and there among the rock runs, he saw the woman. The sun had not yet risen, but she was bathed in golden pieces of light. She was an Indian girl, hardly 16 years of age. Her face was very beautiful. Her clothes were colorful. The cactus and stones about her were made in color so strong that the stones appeared like jewels. The woman asked, Juan, where are you going? My lady, I am hurrying to Holy Mass. The woman spoke again, Dear son, I love you. I'm the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who created all things. I desire that a church be built in this place, where I will show my compassion to your people and to all who sincerely ask my help in their work and in their sorrow. Here I will console them. So hurry to the city and tell the bishop all that you have seen and heard. Juan fell to his knees when the Virgin told him who she was. He said, no, lady, I will do what you ask. Juan began his journey from the hill called Tepeyac, Mexico City, to see the bishop. Juan came to the home of the bishop. The bishop was moved by the sincerity of this convert, but was doubtful that the Queen of Heaven would want a church in a desert area where no people live. He said he would take it over, and Juan could come and talk about it some other time. The sun was about to set when Juan, tired and hungry, reached the little hill. When he climbed the hill, the lady was there. He knelt and told her the story of his visit and said, My lady, I am unworthy of your trust. Please send someone else to the bishop. The lady answered, My little son, you are the one I have chosen. Return to the bishop tomorrow and repeat my request for a church in this place. Noble lady, Juan answered, I will do as you ask, but I fear the bishop will not be pleased to see me again so soon. Tomorrow I will return to tell you of my visit. After Mass the next day, which was Sunday, Juan went to Mexico City again. The bishop listened patiently and suggested that the lady give him a sign before he would go any further with building a church for her. Juan promised to obtain whatever sign the lady might choose. So Juan went back to report to the Holy Virgin and to ask for the sign. Juan knelt at the feet of the Holy Virgin, who was waiting for him, and told her of the, of the bishop's request for a sign. She told Juan to return at daybreak the next day, which was Monday, and she would give him a sign. Juan said farewell to the lady and began his journey home. He was now sure that the Virgin Mary had chosen him to be her messenger and he would obey her in everything she wanted him to do. When Juan returned home, he found his uncle very ill with a contagious fever. He prepared medicine for him and took care of him all night and the next day, so he was unable to meet with the Virgin Mary. Fearing death, his uncle begged him to bring the priest to his side for the last time. As Juan was on his way to get the priest, the Virgin Mary met him again, so he tried to avoid meeting her because of his uncle's illness. She asked him what was wrong. 
forgive me because my uncle was dying and wanted to have a priest. I could not be with you yesterday. The lady replied, My dear little son, you are under my protection. I have cured your uncle. Now go to the top of the hill and cut the flowers growing and bring them to me. Although he wondered how his uncle could have been cured so soon and how he could ever find roses growing on the rocky hill in December, Juan obeyed. When he reached the top of the hill, Juan really found beautiful roses drooping with dew, while the cacti and bushes were edged with frost among the rocks. Juan wore the Aztec working apron, called a toma. It was a corset fabric like a burlap sack and could be used as a cape. He filled the apron with the fragrant roses, then hurried to bring them to the Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary took the roses which Juan brought to her and rearranged them with her own hands. Mary said, Little son, this is my sign to the bishop. Let no one see what you are carrying. Tell the bishop that I have cured your uncle and that I myself have arranged these roses in this way. This time he will believe you. This time the bishop followed witnesses to hear Wong's story. When Wong had finished telling the bishop what the Virgin Mary had said, he and Titus fell him up, and the roses fell to the floor. He was surprised to see that the Virgin Mary had given him and the bishop an even more wonderful sign in the roses. His vision of her was imprinted in all her beauty upon the front of the Toma. The bishop and the others in the room fell to their knees. They were convinced now that the lady who appeared to Juan in the bright light was really the mother of God, and that she spoke to him and asked that a church be built in her honor. The Virgin Mary had worked a miracle. She left her own picture for the whole world to see. It remained on the Toma for many centuries to come to remind people of her love for them. The bishop then arose and reverently untied the Toma. The news of Mary's picture, miraculously imprinted on the Toma, spread through the countryside. The next day, a joyful procession was led by the bishop to the cathedral, where the Toma was put on display. Wong was asked to show the bishop and his companions the little hill where the Virgin wanted her church to be built. They also went to see his uncle. They found him perfectly cured. The uncle then told them the marvelous story of the cure. The room was filled with soft light, and a beautiful woman stood before him. She told him about the future of herself and added, Call me in my image Santa Maria de Guadalupe, our Lady of Guadalupe. The news spread among the Indian converts that they would have their own church. Hundreds volunteered to help build it. In two weeks, the small church was completed, and on December 26, the sacred image was brought to the procession. It was placed above the altar just before Holy Mass was offered. Mary's message is one of love for all of us here today and all of mankind. Let us rejoice with our Mother in Heaven, Our Lady of Guadalupe.